Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, as we like to say here at Shady Acres Woodshop. Howdy! Today we have American Chestnut. This comes from my good friend Dave at Calmwood Creations. I've just marked the spot here in the middle and drilled a hole for my woodworm screw. We're going to get this mounted up on the lathe and turn us a vase or a weed pot. Closer to a weed pot, I guess. Let's get to it. Not always a good idea to use a woodworm screw on end grain, but this looks like it's pretty sound material and I feel good about it. I'll bring up my tailstock. This is just going to be a simple classic weed pot shape. Nothing too special about it, but it'll be fun to do piece. I don't think I even said it's about six and a half inches tall and about four, four and a quarter inches in diameter. See what kind of speed we can get here. Should be pretty good. We'll start there about 750 RPM. I'm going to grab a 5 8 inch bowl gouge after I sharpen it up and we'll get to turning this American chestnut into a weed pot. You can hear my heater running. That's because we're back to not freezing cold but chilly. It's about 48 degrees out here. Change of plans. I'm going to use a roughing gouge. I'm not going to make any attempt to save any of this bark uh, because it's a vase I guess. I, I, because it's mostly round already. I, I don't know why I'm not but I'm just going to take it down to round and then start shaping it. Like I said, 750 RPM, bindle roughing gouge, mask and face shield on. Okay, well that's pretty round. I'm going to square off the bottom here and we're going to put in a recess. I'm just going to use a parting tool to square it up. Nice and flat. We'll do the recess later. I'm going to go ahead and start shaping it. And for that, I'll use the bowl gouge, 5 8 inch bowl gouge. And I'm picking the speed up to about 1200 RPM. Let's see what this grain looks like. I grew up in a big house on a big corner lot and all across the front and all down the side was chestnut trees and I spent a lot of hours in those chestnut trees. trying to decide if I like what I have here or what I need to do. I, it's kind of what I had in mind already. I think I'll, I'm going to mark out for the tenon so that I know where my edge can be. I know I said tenon. I didn't mean it. Recess. So my edge pretty much needs to be just about where it is here because the recess needs to be just a little bit larger than that circle. Well I decided because I only have the woodworm screw holding it up here rather than turn it out of there recess I'm just going to go ahead and drill it and then we'll do a little bit of turning to put the dovetail on the inside. So I've got the lathe spinning at 175 rpm. This is a 2 and an eighth inch Forstner bit. OK, 
Okay, that ought to do it. Now I'm going to use this dovetail tool to put a dovetail on the inside of this recess. And then to disguise my hole there from the bit, we'll put a couple of decorative rings in here. And that's good. And we'll turn it around and finish up our turning. Well, I'm getting a little ahead of myself again. You know, I'm just not used to doing spindle turnings. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and sand this and finish it because it's my last chance to do it on the lathe. And I prefer to do it on the lathe. So I'm just going to use a 2 inch disc handheld starting at 80. And I'll just do this up through 400 grit and then we'll figure out what kind of finish we're going to put on here. I've turned the piece around with the jaws expanded into the recess. I did go ahead and finish the bottom. It took like 20 seconds so you didn't miss much. You'll see me finish the outside here. I think what I want to do is narrow this neck down a little bit. I think it's just too thick. Uh, although I do want to leave it substantial, I want to be able to get a lot of flowers in there, not not just three. So I'm not going to take much off, but I think it just needs to be more narrow. Or this needs to be bigger, but I can't make it bigger because that's all the wood there is. Still have a little bit of bark left, so we know we haven't taken it all down yet. So all I can do is make this thinner, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be using a half inch standard grind bowl gouge. I'm going to be turning at 1300 RPM, mask and face shield on. I'm toying with the idea if something like that would look good, but I don't think so. That certainly doesn't look good. Still doesn't look good, does it? Nope. Well, it's a subtle difference, but I like it better. Yeah, okay. Okay, all right. I'm happy with it. Time for sanding. Well, of course, I forgot we, we have to drill this out. I've got an inch and a half bit in here. It's not going to reach to the bottom. Obviously, I'm going to add this extension to it once I get in there a ways. But it's easiest to get it started without the extension because the extension tends to wobble. But once I have a hole there, it'll be fine. 
Got the lathe spinning forward at about 200 RPM. And that's pretty boring. Get it? Boring. I'll bring you back here in a little bit. Okay, I've installed my extension. It's a little noisy. And I'll just be doing that a couple more times and then we'll be done. Okay, I want to open the mouth up just a little bit here. Uh, so I've sharpened up my half inch bowl gouge. I need to come in here very straight. I need to secure my gouge to the tool rest. Otherwise it's going to skate on me and mess up the whole top here. So I've got to be very gentle. 1300 RPM mask and face shield on. Okay, now time for sanding. I'm going to start the sanding with this sandpaper on a stick routine I got going. I'm just going to fold this up a little bit. Actually fold it the wrong way. Here we go. Stick that in there. Turn the lathe on at about 350 RPM. And I'll do that up through 400. When I'm done with that, I'll switch to my 2-inch disc with the lay spinning in reverse at about 350, starting at 80 grit, working up through 400 on the outside. And I'll show you what that looks like as soon as I get my mask on, which I should have done for the drill part. And that looks like that's going to be really easy. I'll be back here in a bit and we'll put some finish on there. See you in a bit. I'm going to start on the inside here. I've got some sanding sealer in this little can and my brush. And I'm just going to stick it in there and turn the lathe on. And spread it around. I know you can't see all the way to the bottom. Then I'm just going to put some sanding sealer on a rag and start doing the outside. And I'm hoping this will bring out some of the many colors that I see in here. More than I would have guessed. I see some browns obviously and some beiges. And, but I see some blue. I think it's blue. I got a real nice sanding finish on it. So I'm pretty happy about that. I guess it's kind of gray here and there. So I'll put on two coats of this sanding sealer. This is shellac based sanding sealer. And then I'll put on two coats of shellac. I won't show you that because it looks exactly like this. No difference at all. I just apply it with a brush and a rag and apply it the same way. So I'll bring you back when that's done and we'll get a good look at this thing. I'll see if I can find some flowers to put in it somewhere. See you in a bit. Be sure you stick around at the end of the video so you can see the before and after shot to this piece. If you'd share the video, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Also, at the end, on the turntable, you'll see it with flowers in it. Silk flowers. Well, here it is. One chestnut 
weed pot in the books. Now, for those not familiar with the word weed pot, that just means it doesn't hold water. It won't hold live flowers. It's for silk flowers, dried flowers, or wood flowers that you might make yourself, like in this video right up there in your upper right-hand corner of your screen. I'll show you how to make wood flowers in that one. But this is a, this is a beautiful piece, I think. I finished it with... Uh, Two coats of sanding sealer, two coats of shellac, and then I polished it out with Axe Abrasive and Polishing Paste. And it feels like glass, and it's flawless. Pretty amazing coming from <laughs> Shady Acres Woodshop. Not, not my typical turning, I know. There's the bottom all finished up. Let me know what you think about it. Thank you, Dave, from Calmwood Creations for sending this along for all to enjoy. If you like this video, thumbs up, please. I'd sure appreciate it. If you're a subscriber, thank you very kindly. I truly appreciate that. If you're not a subscriber, you might consider becoming one. I put out regular videos about one a week, and I'd like to keep in touch. An easy way to subscribe is just click my picture you see there near the end of the video. Your comments are always welcome, and I love reading them. So for now, this is Phil, Shady Acres Woodshop, signing off.